Hello, peeps. How are you? Monday, July 17th, 2023. I am going to start doing, this will be the first of a number of Frank Toby slash Fad Gadget videos that I will do. I love this guy. He died a little over 20 years ago, so he hasn't been around for a while. But he is a very influential name in the world of, I don't know, new wave, industrial pop music. And if you don't know Frank Tovey, you need to know Frank Tovey. He also recorded his Fad Gadget. When you see the word, the words Fad Gadget, it's Frank Tovey. It's the same thing. When he, re, when he recorded his Fad Gadget, it was a little, it was more new wave, more, more electronic, more industrial. And, you know, you guys who watch my videos who love Ministry and Skinny Puppy and these kinds of bands, you need to know Frank Tovey. Absolutely. If you don't know Frank Tovey, you have a lot to look forward to because the guy has, he made a ton of great records. He's been dead for a couple of decades now. He was just getting ready to, he had stopped making records for several years and then he, he was gearing up to start making more records and then he died. And young too. I don't think he was even 50. He was in his 40s. He, he had a life filled with heart problems. He always, he always had heart issues. And he finally died of a heart attack in, in his 40s. So he was very young and he still had a lot to offer this world, but he left behind a ton of great music. And he was very hard to pin down. This is one of the reasons I love, personally, I love Frank Tovey is that he, he was kind of a legend in the 80s for inventing that harder industrial tinge new wave music. But then he kind of went off on a different path and he did all kinds of different music. He made more traditional rock music. He made noise music. And I'll get into all these. He made jazz influenced music and he made folk music, which is the record I'm going to talk about today. I thought rather than starting at the beginning, I'm going to start with the first record that I ever heard from Frank Tovey. I didn't know Frank Tovey when I discovered him in 1989. I didn't know him then. I had seen the name. I knew Fad Gadget. I knew it was a group. I knew it was a band. Didn't know who was in it. I didn't know what it involved. I knew it was on Mute Records, which I liked because bands like Depeche Mode and Erasure and big band, Knights of Ebb, they were on Mute. But I never got into Fad Gadget or Frank Tovey. Oddly enough, my intro to Frank Tovey was MTV, of all things. Back in the late 80s, there was this program called 120 Minutes. You guys remember this show? Those of you who are old enough to remember? MT I know this is, this is completely impossible to believe, but there was a time in history where MTV actually showed videos, and they actually showed good videos sometimes. And every Sunday at midnight, there was this show called up 120 minutes and it was two hours of weird underground music, <coughs> excuse me. And they actually showed good stuff. Not always, but it was dedicated to stuff you would not see during the other 24 hours of the day, Monday through Saturday. That's where I learned of Frank Tovey. Very strange, but I saw his video for Sam Hall, and the minute I, I saw the video for Sam Hall, I was like, oh, wow, I need to check this guy out. And Sam Hall is a traditional folk song, but as I, as I dove in backwards to his catalog, I realized that this album, Tyranny in the Hired Hand, was kind of a one-off for him. It was his one folk album. Everything else he'd done up to that point was very experimental, new wave, industrial, electronic, whatever you want to name it. It was a much, much different flavor, but I learned that I loved that other stuff just as much as I loved Tyranny and the Hired Hand. Frank Tovey is one of those artists that I love to talk about because you couldn't, pin, you couldn't pigeonhole him. And I think that's why a lot of people have not given him more credit. Humans like to put people in little convenient boxes. They like these bands to sound like this and they like those bands to sound like that. You see it on YouTube too especially the, the most popular album reviewers on YouTube. They love throwing out genre tags. They like using terms like IDM and house and trance. 
but that doesn't explain that that explains bad groups that explains music that is uninteresting the most interesting artists out there are people like frank tovey that you cannot pigeonhole he does whatever he, he did whatever he wanted and and he did it brilliantly not everything he did worked all the time but he never made a boring album and as you know as i always harp on on this channel I love music that's not boring, even if I don't really like it. If it's interesting to me, that's worth listening to. And Frank Tovey always made interesting music, even on his records that I didn't particularly love. He doesn't have one album that I can't sit down and listen to and be like, wow, that's cool. I don't necessarily even love it, but it's different. He also was known for his live performances. He, I, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing more videos on Frank Toby. I encourage you to go to YouTube and try to find some live footage of Fad Gadget. He was definitely known to be a big performance artist and he did so on stage. He'd cover himself in feathers and tar and especially you skinny puppy fans. I know you like skinny puppy because of the, the stage antics you get. Go check out Frank Tovey live. If you like Skinny Puppy live, check out Frank Tovey live. You need to do this. I would be very surprised if Ogre from Skinny Puppy hadn't been at least a tiny bit influenced by Frank Tovey. And Frank Tovey influenced bands like Depeche Mode, Erasure. I mean, Depeche Mode opened for Fad Gadget back in the early 80s. I'll say that again. Depeche Mode opened for him. Frank Tovey did not open for Depeche Mode. Way later on the Exciter tour, Fad Gadget was getting ready to come back and produce some more music. And he had been slated to open for Depeche Mode. And I think he actually did, but then he died. So yeah, that sucks. But I think he did open for Depeche Mode, did a number of dates in the UK, was gearing up to release a new album, and then he died. So yeah, that's brutal. Anyway, Frank Tovey is a name you should know. I'm going to be talking about a bunch of his stuff in the future. But I thought rather than start at the beginning, I'm going to start with the album that I first heard. This was my intro to Frank Tovey and Fad Gadget, Tyranny and the Hired Hand. This came out in 1989. Let me take this off. Sorry about that glare. Got the little promo cut here. This came out on Mute Records. Restless Records here in America. And this is a collection of folk songs. You find songs from Bob Dylan on here. You have Woody Guthrie songs on here. You have a Lou Reed song on here. This was not the stuff that Frank Tovey was known for. He was known for, for the most part, pop music in, in all of its forms. Industrial, I mean, Let's face it, industrial, new wave, those are all versions of pop. Those are all under the pop umbrella. Industrial sometimes wanders out of that when it gets super experimental. But I think in most instances, those are all just uh, branching off from the pop ecosystem. There's nothing pop about this, really. I think Sam Hall maybe approaches that a little bit. But these are all traditional folk songs, all arranged by Frank Tovey and a few other people. But this was my intro to the man, Frank Tovey, we know as Fad Gadget. I'll show the record here. Oh, here's, a, here's an insert. This is his band. Great band, too. You have to remember that up to this point, Frank Tovey had released mainly electronic pop, new wave, industrial stuff. So for him to just, and, and alone, you know, it was just him and maybe one or two other people in the studio. But all of a sudden, he had this big band he was playing with. Very tight band. Excellent production. Excellent performances. This is a very cool album. And if you ever do get into the full catalog of Frank Tovey, you're going to understand that this was his one his one off. None of his other records sounded like this. And it's an interesting place to start. As I mentioned before, this was my intro to Frank Tovey. I heard this and I was like, wow. At first, I didn't know what to think of it. I knew I loved Sam Hall. 
and then I, I started digging deeper and I saw he had a number of records that came out before in the 80s. And all of that was more new wave electronic stuff. So I was like, wow, okay, so what, what caused this? And I, I still don't know. From what I've read, he just wanted to make something different. He was being inspired by traditional folk songs and he made a folk record. I love that about artists who just do things that are completely unexpected. I didn't know it was unexpected at the time, but in, in retrospect, I'm glad that this was my intro because there's just so much other stuff that's so brilliant that came before it. There really, you start to understand the expansive nature of an artist. And Frank Tovey was that. I think he was a mime. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he started off as a mime in the late seventies. He was a performance artist really. And then he turned to music and he still continued the tradition of performance art in his live shows. Again, go look up Frank Tovey live. We'll see what I mean. He was a sight to see. I never saw him live, but the videos I've seen, wow. He put on a show. He didn't just hear music. And he would, you know, he hurt himself. He flailed himself into the audience. He sacrificed his body in the name of performance art. You have to respect that. But this is a collection of 16 working class folk songs. Most of them are traditional. But again, you get like Lou Reed, Bob Dylan, Woody Guthrie. None of these songs are written by Toby. Every one of these songs is a cover. And it's really cool. Especially when you know his stuff before this. But, you know, when I first heard this without any other kind of reference point for Frank Toby, I was like, wow, this is interesting music to be putting out in the late 80s when everyone's going new wave and electronic drums. And that's an important, I think that's an important point to remember. In the late 80s, everyone was turning to synthesizers and drum pads and samplers. Frank Tovey had already been doing that. He was sick of that. He wanted to go this other direction and he made an album that he probably knew would not be popular. And he had the support of Daniel Miller too, and that's important to remember. Frank Tovey was the first act that was signed for Mute in its history. So Daniel Miller had a love for Frank Tovey. I think he pretty much gave Frank Tovey license to do whatever he wanted. And Miller worked with Toby. He did plenty of productions and remixes for him, mostly as Fat Gadget. But I think Daniel Miller went out of his way to make sure Frank Toby had everything he wanted and made sure he got to release whatever he wanted. And the world's a better place for it. This is a very cool album. Open your mind if you're going to listen to this. Understand that this is going to sound like nothing else Frank Toby ever did. And that's why it's beautiful. A collection of folk songs by an otherwise industrial new wave artist. Get your head wrapped around that and give this a listen. This is the 12 inch that came out with it. Sam Hall, the only single that came from it. Now this is interesting. It, it has an edited version of Sam Hall, the album version. There's one, there's one line where Toby says fuck. And so they edited that out for the single. It's basically the version you see in the video right here. It's just, I don't know, it's like 20 seconds shorter. They had to take out that, you know, I think it's two lines where he says fuck. And that's it. You get a slightly edited version of Sam, of, uh, Sam Hall. It also has Ricky's Hand, which is an old fad gadget song, but this it's a folk version here. They pulled out one of his classics, Fad Gadget Classics, which was a new wave, a new wave industrial type track. And they did a, a folk version. It's really good too. There's House of the Rising Sun is also on here, which is not on the album. And I think John's Hammer, John Henry Let Your Hammer Ring is also on here. That's on the album. So you get two album tracks, one slightly edited, and then you get two B-sides that are only on this single. And I highly recommend you pick this up too. It's a, it's a good companion piece to the album. And it's the only single that came out from this album. 
So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be doing a lot more Frank Tovey and Fad Gadget because I really love this guy. He is a true, he was a true original. His music still resonates. And I will repeat, if you like Ministry and Skinny Puppy and any industrial dance music that's come out since 1980, which is most of it, you need to know this guy. Dig into his catalog immediately. Immediately. I'd be shocked if Al Jorgensen didn't say that he is heavily influenced by Frank Tovey. You listen to the, some of that early fad gadget stuff and you're like, oh yeah, this sounds like early ministry. And I am not exaggerating. So if you're into those bands, you need to know Frank Tovey. Check this guy out. All right. Thanks for watching. Until my next video, I hope you guys are having a good day and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.